What's up SEO pros, we're here with uh, Jobin, and what we're doing is we're going to be auditing his website. So where we left off uh, before I had a bunch of audio problems was just setting up this initial roadmap and he was telling me what the purpose of the website is. So uh, let's just get back to it, man. Absolutely. Perfect. Cool. So you were telling me that the point of the website was to get both national and local clients, I believe? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so the homepage is targeting more like national and then you're doing the local pages as well, but you are selling like SEO services and probably like web design and whatnot? Yes, absolutely, yes. Okay, cool. So that being said, let me get into uh, the other parts of this. So um, I'm just going to put business type local for now. Okay. Because you are probably going to start getting leads locally first. Well, actually, I don't know. We'll just put local and national. And the date today is 6-22-2018. Time is 5 p.m. Pacific Standard. What time is it there for you? It's like 6. 6 o'clock, right okay. Yeah. Content management system WordPress? Yes, that's right. Okay. And audience targeting, probably business owners. And conversion value, we'll get that in a second. Did you end, end up granting me analytics and search console access? Yes, that's done. Okay, cool. So we'll just get into that before we do anything. And let's start our screaming frog crawl. So how long have you had this uh, website or business for? A uh, couple of years now. I think we started back in 2014. Um, and yeah, it's going good. Uh, we started off with the national first. We didn't focus on the local area, and we really focused on, uh, you know, creating a brand and uh, spread the word around on social media and stuff like that. Uh, and it really picked up. You know, it like shoot it off. We got a lot of clients, and we did good. We were able to perform well for the clients as well. Uh, but then we stepped in the local field as well. And then things have been a bit haywire because uh, the people are really not able to concentrate or you know get the job done. And I really think uh, because I've been you know back and forth with projects and meeting clients, I've been not able to focus on the website totally. So I think uh, this audit would really really help us. Okay. Um, and for the uh, website itself, uh, I'm trying to find the the URL in Search Console. I don't see it in here so far. Mm, okay. I see it on so analytics. I don't see search console access. Just give me one search console. Okay. User management. There we go. Users. Can you check now? Um, yeah, let me check. Still nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, while well, we wait for that, I'm just going to start going through this stuff. Could it be that we have not synced the analytics with the, the search console? Um. You don't have to in order to have Search Console working. Okay. Okay, I'm going to check out robots.txt. Get out of here, Coda, dude. Ugh. All right. Um, so no sitemap in the robots.txt. You have disallowed WP content plugins. Surprised you're not disallowing WP admin. Hopefully that's not getting indexed. So let's check out the sitemap. I um, mean, as far as your competitors go, uh, you're probably going to be looking. Okay, so your sitemap, I guess, redirects. Let's see. 
underscore x uh, index not XML. There it is. So I would redirect the regular sitemap or the other sitemap URL. Okay. To main sitemap. Um, as far as your competitors go, I mean you're gonna have both local and national. So if we look at let's say for instance somebody you're gonna try to beat or compare or compete with locally, let me just look at a uh, site. Let's say somebody over here. Um, one of the things you're going to want to be wary about in these different locations is that, you know, a lot of the times for some reason, you don't really, at least from what I've experienced, get a lot of traffic from local area pages in terms of SEO. Okay. Um, I don't know how, if you've got, I would like to see your search console to see if you actually are. Um, but I'm assuming that you haven't probably got a lot of clients from this landing page. Yes. So if we go to conversions, goals, I'm assuming that you're hopefully doing conversion tracking. Okay, no. So you'd want to do that because you want to see if these pages are providing any value in the first place. But like I said, for the most part, I would not be relying on the uh, local pages for... God, Cody, you're driving me nuts, dude. Why won't you go away from me? Dude, I can't wait till I get my... moving into a different house and... Ah. He's like, Jesus. <laughs> Okay. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So I would try not to rely on those local pages because, like I said, most for the most part, they're really just for show. Um, what I would probably focus more on is content marketing in terms of like digital marketing websites because you can obviously get clients pretty much anywhere, right? Absolutely. Um. So. For the competitor research portion, I would say that your competitors would probably be like anybody ranging from, you know, uh, you know Brian Dean, Backlinko, or any anybody who talks about SEO for that matter, um, even yes. me. So yep. in terms of what you'd be doing there is you'd want to be figuring out, um, you know, who these competitors are, what their organic monthly traffic looks like, and how you can sort of build out up a presence around content marketing similar to that. Let's see if you even have... Uh, well, let me look at this. Go in here. So you got 926 organic keywords, 72 estimated traffic. And these are the different pages that are ranking. Um, so like, yeah, for instance, something like Yoast breadcrumbs short code. But I mean, your biggest concern probably right now for your goal is just to get more clients, right? Yes. So what is your current client base at, out of curiosity? I'm sorry, uh, the, the volume is a bit low. What's your current client base at current? Like, what do you, what kind of, how many clients do you have right now? Just out of curiosity. Uh, right now we got 18 uh, right now, uh, out of, which a mix, um, I would say we have like seven design projects that are running right now and the remaining ones are SEO and uh, social marketing. Marketing. Yeah. Okay, and so what do those projects look like? Are they like, just out of like, curiosity, like what are the, um, like are they big projects like above like thousand, two thousand dollar projects and are they reoccurring or are they just like one time? Uh, the design projects, um, out of seven I would say, um, Three of them that we have are small scale, which cost around 600 to 700. Then we have uh, four, which we are charging around uh, three to 4,000 for that. And are those then, ongoing retainers or? Uh, yeah. Uh, when you say ongoing retainer, like, sorry, but what exactly do, would you mean by that? The reason why I'm curious about this stuff is because I'm trying to understand like what your market looks like mm -hmm. and this cat, dude. Um, for me, like I, you know, I the way I set this stuff up, I make it really easy. Where I, I'm basically yeah. selling packages, and I'm I know who my target audience is, and like what the best way to get to them is, and so that's why I'm trying to figure out sort of like what your process looks like um, internally, <laughs> so I can figure out like how to um, kind of give you the that's best. True like strategy because sure. you could just be spending your time doing like meetup groups and that would be like better than doing SEO for a local area is what I'm trying to say. 
Absolutely. So what we do basically is um, communication is we don't have like a fixed price or, you know, a fixed. Uh, we really look at the, the, the concept, like what the client uh, is looking for, how much work and or man, how much hours or days or months, you know, we have to put in. Uh, is it UX or is it like something, a basic de design that the client wants? Uh, based on that, uh, we we look for a comfortable budget for the customer. Um, so we don't really say, I'm not sure, like the traditional method of selling retainers, uh, we don't really do that. Uh, we just discuss with the client, uh, find out the budget and tell the customer honestly if that can be done, you know, within that budget. If yes, if it works out, you know, we just go ahead and go for it. That's it. Okay. So, and where yeah. are you like generating leads from? Uh, mostly, uh, to be honest, we uh, something that you know we lack at is tracking, but we always have uh, asked our customers. So most of them come through directly to our website. Say for example, our blog has been we have been for the past few months, and you know from the day I believe for some time now we have been updating our blog on a mostly regular basis. So a lot of people come in uh, through our website directly. And few come in through Google My Business, and then word of mouth. Uh, yeah, so far these are the three top I could notice out of the survey that we do with the customers. Okay, so mainly through referral, direct links, that kind of thing, and then maybe some from Google. Yes. From the, probably right. like the blog or something. Okay, so if we look at like I said the location pages, which I got this now for some reason, you can see here like as I was guessing, you're probably going to get this from more like content marketing type pages. And so your sales process, what you what do you do? So you bring people in, um, say for instance, they contact you, say, hey, like, do you know how to do SEO for like a uh, local chiropractor or something? What do you do first? Do you like recommend an SEO audit or like what does that look like? Okay, so the very first thing, yeah, you know, once we get the website and we definitely ask a few questions, such as like, have they been, uh, you know, implementing us here on the website have they tried it already or where do they stand right now is it a new business how old is the website stuff like that once you have the answers to all those questions then we go ahead with the the straight away we go to the audit and once we see the competitor we do a competitive analysis like uh, we check out the competitors using a reps and uh, once we have an idea on uh, how you know how difficult is that niche to crack in what are the you know most valuable keywords because the first target that we focus on is to how to get more clients or more business to the to the customer. Right. right. So because that's what we want to break. Is it like so where should we invest? Should we invest in social media or should should we like just do uh, the basic uh, uh, the SEO like you know fix their technical SEO and stuff like that, build some backlink, guest posting and stuff like that. So yeah, that's how it goes. So it's not the same for everyone. I won't say that it's been different because we have a few clients who've been uh, in a very competitive niche. So we do not do uh, we do not recommend us here directly to them. Uh, we would say you know go for social media marketing first because that's weak. Uh, so we notice that they're the social they're not investing anything for their social media. Uh, where the competitors are, and they're getting a lot of res uh, you know good response. So we go ahead with that. So that's I would say yeah, that's a basic of it. Okay. So. Um, okay. Well, obviously this is just an SEO audit, but I mean I would like to at some point you know if possible kind of see what you would actually be doing because there's two parts to it obviously right there's the you know bringing people in the lead gen which you know you're saying that that's the part that you would sort of like the help on but then there's also the part that I'm just interested in seeing because I you know I like uh, sort of helping people in that regard of you know what does your actual internal process look like once you get the client right and you yeah. know just off the fact that you know we don't really know where the conversions are coming from on our own site I'm guessing that you know from that I don't know if it's true or not but you're not gonna know what the conversions are coming for the client site right Absolutely. So yeah, no. that's a huge internal problem, in my opinion, because you want to be able to say, yeah, you know, for organic traffic, uh, we brought you yeah. in an extra 10% this month, right? 
And that way, when you are charging them the $4,000 per month or whatever you're doing, it's not hard to justify that when you can show them an ROI and it becomes less about, you know, it's easier to scale that than it is to, so like I said, you know, uh, part of it is the client problem, right? But then the other part of it is how do you scale it in a way that's quality? Absolutely. So Absolutely. if you want to talk about that later too, you know, I'm willing to do that. Um, but it's something that I think a lot about and, you know, obviously I would say number one is, you know, for yourself and for the clients, you know, conversion trackings first. Okay. Um, in terms of this other stuff, you know, what you're going to want to look at, I can already tell you for this website without even like um, really looking at it because I've already seen some of it. Like, you know, there should there's no reason why there should be organization markup on every page. Um, you know, some of the pages are like you're indexing tags for blogs. We're on like a ton of different tags, that kind of stuff where it's like I would say number one, first priority, just get the basics fixed on your site first and you know, you can follow the tutorials off the audit when I'm going to re make the recommendations for the in terms of like indexation, you just watch this tutorial and then you optimize your Yoast plugin. Um, okay. But that's number one is being able to set up a standard for the your own agency first to be able to replicate that across other websites. Um, so let me just keep looking at this. So we got site colon name of website. So this is what's being on an index on your website, 1,320 results. Now, if I look at search console and I look at your pages, we got maybe 50 pages receiving a click in the last 90 days. So oh. to see 1300 pages on here, you know, that's probably not a good thing. Um, okay. So first of all, the thing I'm going to recommend is it's probably a good idea to no index your tags, especially since you have so many on your posts. And if you look at what's already being indexed here, you know, you have uh, all these different tags that, some of them are getting clicks, but you know, I don't know if it's worth keeping just because of that. Um, yep. All of these right here, you know, they're only receiving a few. So I would rather see that, you know, you have a hundred quality, like high quality pages on the site than like 1300 tag pages okay. that are kind of quality because that's going to dilute the overall value of the website. Uh, the next thing we have is, um, so here, let me just, let me just start putting the top 10 together because I already know what some of it's going to be. So top 10, uh, version tracking for main pages, sorry. The next thing would be the, um, the uh, going, so this is what I always recommend is go through your top pages on Google being indexed on Google. and see which are worth keeping and which are worth optimizing. So what I mean by that is if we go through all these different, so if I were just to sit down right now and look at all these, uh, if I just start clicking on this stuff, let me click on this one first. I got you.com SEO. Okay. So this is the category page you're indexing. Now, first of all, if we look at what this is showing up as on Search Console, zero clicks for this. Um, you know, you might not even, well, actually you are indexing it, but uh, one of the things that you might wanna do since it's not receiving any traffic is change the architecture for this because it doesn't really make sense for it to be agachi.com forward slash SEO because that could be your SEO service, right? So it would make more sense for it to be blog slash, you know, category slash SEO, right? So that's one of the best practices that I might recommend in terms of the way your architecture is laid out. Um, okay. So if I go into site architecture, you know, categorize URL structure might be a good idea to do that. Make sure you're doing the 301s if you do end up doing that. The time you wouldn't want to do that is, for instance, if you had a bunch of traffic to that category already or something, and then you wouldn't want to really change it up. But so that's the first thing I noticed about that page. If I go back to the search results over here. Now keep in mind, this has nothing to do with lead generation, right? You, you're you're going to end up doing this stuff, but this is more about how do you represent yourself as a business? Um, if you don't want to change this, I don't really think it's going to affect how you get clients, to be honest with you. Uh, maybe in the long run, if you do a bunch of content marketing, but if you're just more concerned about lead gen and you don't really care about how you represent yourself, don't even worry about this. Just completely forget it. 
Um, the next thing I would say is if you are going to be doing like, uh, for instance, this page, you know, or any page in general, if you're going to be optimizing it, start adding qualifiers within the title tags. If I, if I look at all these title tags right here, you can see they're pretty bland, right? Contact forward slash Agachi. If we look at some of the, hopefully, I don't know. I've been literally migrating my site every five minutes lately. If we look at the URLs on mine, you can see like, uh, you know, some of these like, S, you know, contact oh. SEO consultant. So, so if I want to rank for SEO consultant, which I'm not ranking for that yet, but because I just started optimizing it and I changed my theme like a hundred times, um, you can see at least I'm putting sort of the topical uh, content throughout the site. So sort of like how you'd optimize a client's website, you know, you want to make sure that you're mentioning similar keywords throughout the website. So like if the homepage is going for, you know, SEO, uh, SEO consultant, then the services would be like SEO consulting services. And then the contact would be like SEO, contact SEO consultant, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then hopefully you'd have some sort of qualifier in there in your title tag. So if we look at the end part, you can see, um, you know, get expert SEO help today or, you know, uh, to some sort of qualifier in there that's going to help, um, you know, entice a click because the click through rates are also going to be somewhat of a ranking factor. Okay. Um, so if I go back to your site, you know, that's one of the other things that you're going to want to look at, you know, each of these pages is clicking into them, making sure that if you are targeting something like that, are you following like the click through rate, op you know, optimization best practice, which really is just going in there and just adding sort of qualifiers in there, like, you know, five star reviews or whatever it is. Uh, so if we go in here, go, so you'd go through the top, te uh, top, you know, whatever, hundred pages to 10, 20 pages, whatever you want to do. And you would optimize pages that you do want to keep with click through rates, uh, click through rate optimization. Now, the next thing you would probably want to do if say, for instance, you did want to like, you know, represent the business the best way possible, um, or at least create a practice that you might want to use for your clients, which this is something I recommend is you would go in to say, for instance, um, your different pages, let's say this page, blog page, right? Yeah. Okay. One of the things about this, the blog, anybody could uh, figure out or sorry, should know is that generally you should have some sort of introduction for your categories because you can end up ranking your categories if you end up putting a little bit of content about them. Um, yeah. So for instance, you know, if we were to go to, let's see if this site's working, blog, here we got, you know, welcome to the best SEO blog on the net. We have posts from ranging from this to that. And then you would put links pointing to those different categories as you as well. Um, if you wanted to, uh, the, the reason why I figured this out is from Yoast.com. They talk about it all the time and they do it on their own blog as well. You know, you can see here, they do categories for their blogs and then within the, or sorry, descriptions for their blogs. And then within the categories, they have more descriptions and they're actually able to rank these different categories. So, um, I would definitely recommend something like that. If you are going to be putting a blog layouts on people's sites or on your own. Um, the other thing I was going to say though, is say for instance, you know, this was a really important page, which, you know, it doesn't really matter too much to figure out the intent on this. Cause most people probably won't be finding it, but say for instance, uh, you know, you wanted to rank this. Um, one of the things that I try to do for like my, my top URLs that I'm trying to optimize is I'll take the different, let's say for instance, this page, I'll take the different URLs. And then I'll figure out what averages need to be on that page so I can add to them. So say for instance, the home page should have, you know, 800 words, three image, two images and one video. The way I, you know, figure that out is with the software that I'm actually making, which uh, you put in your URL, it crawls the different, or sorry, you put in your keyword, it crawls all the different pages ranking for that keyword. And then it tells you, um, you know, how many words you need to put in for that. So if we put in SEO, it would tell us, okay, for that, you need 200 words on average, that kind of thing, which at the end of the day, if you have all these different URLs mapped out, I'll just show you how it kind of looks on mine. It makes it a lot easier. And this is something that you can scale really quickly for your business. Um, boom, boom. Roadmap. Here. Um, are you still using Cora? 
No, so I basically kind of created my own type of Korra, which is a lot more simple in my opinion. Oh, lovely. Which, yeah, it should be out t actually today. Today? Oh, awesome. So, so this is what it would sort of look like. So you can do this for your clients, you can do it for yourself. But like I said, what you do is you just chrome through your search results. Like, okay, is this worth keeping? Is this worth keeping? Whatever. You look for reoccurring themes, like for instance, if you have 100 pages that are tags or paginated pages or something you don't want on there, you just no index them. And if you want to go back and do this later, you can. But um, what you do is you go through these, you find your top most important URLs. And if it's a huge website, if there's like, you know, millions of pages on the website, just go through Search Console first, you know, just start with all the ones that are already ranking. So say, for instance, we just wanted to make this really simple. We just go to your top traffic page. We go to queries. And we see this is the keyword it's getting clicks for. Boom. Broad core algorithm updates. Now, if you're ranking, let's see, right there at the bot, let's say, you know, number 10, we want to rank you higher. And, you know, you could do this, like I said, for any client URL. So this makes it really easy to win uh, organic traffic. And, you know, it, 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 this is something you can scale. So we put in that URL or we put in that, sorry, let's go over here. We put in that keyword. Boom. We take the URL that's ranking. I'm just going to say this is the URL. And then we figure out, okay, is the content there or not already? Yes, there's already content. Uh, does the page exist? Yes. Does it need no. more content? Yes. Or sorry, this is this would be it needs more content. Now, you can put any notes if you want, like need to add video, whatever. Then you would have your current word count. So if that was at 500 words, and we see on average the top 20 pages that are ranking have around 1,600 with that tool. Boom, we just put it in there. We figure out the difference. Okay, we need to add a thousand more words and then we need to add 10 more images, whatever it is. And you can see the page speeds, you know, a little bit too high. So let's optimize that, whatever else, right? And then we just hire a content writer to put content in there, whatever it is. That, if you do that for the top, you know, 20 URLs for a client or for your own website, I guarantee your traffic's gonna go up no matter what. I mean, that's just how it works. Um, so, you combine that with other things, like I said, with like click-through rate optimization. Um, the, the things that I'm telling you right now are just things that scale. The, the biggest problem is generally not getting clients. The biggest problem is scaling in a way that's quality because everybody can get clients, but not everybody can do quality work. Correct. So our goal, in my opinion, is one, to represent ourselves as a brand that knows a little bit about SEO or enough to be dangerous. And then the next part is to be able to replicate what we do across different sites in order to give them at least a two time 2x ROI or at least meet the expectation that we're going to get them 20% more traffic or conversions or whatever it is. Right. So these are some of the best ways to do it in my opinion. You just go through them. So you, if I were you, I would just continually go through these be like, okay, contact page. I'm going to optimize that home page. This is a second home page. I'm going to no index that because there's no reason for that to be there. Um, or just for tenant, that's easier. You don't want to you don't want to no index a bunch of pages because if you do, Google still crawls them. So if you can, just for ten the pages, it's a lot better. Right. Um, if we look at some of these, we look at okay, you know, here's the different reviews. We're hoping that all the reviews here match how many reviews are showing here. So if we put rating five. I guess that's fine because you have the reviews, so we don't have to worry about a manual penalty. But, um, you know, the next thing too is figuring out, okay, if this page is trying to rank and it's not ranking for anything, if I go to pages uh, like that, boom, nothing, right? But there's a bunch of content on there. So first of yep. all, we want to figure out, okay, do we want to keep this page or we want to get rid of it, 301 it to a different page? Because right now, this is just a basically a page on our site saying, you know, it's not getting any traffic. Nobody's going to it. And it's not ranking for anything. Should we make this into a new page or should we get rid of it? And, you know, that's another thing you can do for clients that's really easy is just remove half of their website. Sounds ridiculous, but I've done that before. I've gotten like, you know, gotten rid of hundreds of pages and their traffic skyrocketed within a week. Yeah. Um, so you get the point. Just if I were you go through a lot of those, I'll just keep going through this. So in terms of what you're indexing, we got um, incorrect usage of 301s. Let's, let's just check out what you have on here in terms of SiteLiner.
my my audits usually aren't this informative, but it's because you're running an SEO agency and I happen to know a little bit more about that than most topics. So I'm just like a little bit more like descriptive. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, no worries. I don't know why this. Okay, I guess it's getting. Uh, okay, so you got your paginated pages, not a big deal. You got categories. So you got author pages. I would no index the author pages because there's really no reason to have those. I don't believe you're indexing dates. Let me just see. Uh, I don't think so. So it really just seems like a lot of these are tags. Yeah, I'd get rid of all of those. Um, indexation count too high, yes. Incorrect usage of 301's canonicals or no index tags. Um, let's just check here. So you got some 301's here. You're gonna wanna fix some 404's. Um, in terms of your thin content pages, let's check out what's showing up here. Where's the word counts? So the really, the best way to figure out whether or not the thin content pages even exist, besides just the fact that, you know, there'd be under 300 words is just to go through and kind of map out your pages in the first place. One of the yeah. biggest things that I think you need to do with this website after you, so I would say after you set up conversion tracking, no index tags and authors, wait for those pages to get no indexed and then go back through what's showing up on Google and start figuring out what's worth keeping. I mean, you can do both at the same time and you're just going to have to be filtering through a lot of pages. I think actually what you can do is you can do site call net minus tag. Okay. And that'll take everything that doesn't have tag. Wait, tag right there. Let me see if I can get. It'll take everything that's not tag in there. And I think that right there is 401. So okay. that's what you want to do is go through all of those pages. Because even if you take all the tags out. Mm -hmm. Wait, hold on. Let me just do also minus blog. So that's 127. So everything besides the tag and the blog pages, you got 127 things being indexed. And a lot of these are the actual posts themselves. You also have these portfolio items, which oh, yeah. that's weird. I would get, I would no index those as well. Okay. Back in here. Portfolio. Do I not have that in there? Let's add that in there. I'm gonna make this purple. By the way, it has nothing to do with you. I just this is so I can update the spreadsheet myself. Um, okay, so portfolio. Get rid of those. Let's also minus what's in there. So that's 86 now. So we got. So this is what you want to go through. Once. This is what you can go through right away. You only have to go through 86 results, but figure out, because these are going to be all of your value pages right here. Everything that's in here, all these 86 pages. So I would spend the time at, at a certain point optimizing these 86 results. Um, but don't wait. And then type this into Google. and optimize pages individually. Okay, so if we go through here, boom. So we even have stuff like this. Look at the, 
Oh, that's, that's still testimonials. Oh, actually, sorry. So you have individual testimonials, I think, indexed as well. Oh, okay. Let me see. So all that needs to come I don't even know what that is. I think that's... Okay. Oh, and you're indexing attachment pages. You want to get rid of those. And then you have all these other pages. These just weird, you know, pages that shouldn't be here. Yeah, these are attachment pages. Um... Once you do that too, you might want to add your individual service pages. I don't know if you have those on there already, but let's just check. Blog. Wait, what was I doing? I was looking at a. Uh... What I was looking at? Let me just go back here. So. Product tags, no. Dates, no. Account pages, no. Media attachments, yes. Agile pages, fine. Business name included in all titles. I think it might be. No, it's not. Okay, good. Um, so we already talked about the click-through rate optimization. Obviously, you want to optimize the titles and metas according to what we were talking about. It also looks like a lot of these pages, for some reason, are missing meta descriptions. I don't know why. It might just be me seeing that, but let me see. At 219 pages missing meta descriptions. But I think a lot of those might be tags. Tags, yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah I think it's all pretty much tags. So once you get rid of those, that'll be fine. Um, and then you have the schema markup for aggregate rating. So you're probably good there. Uh, you probably want the schema markup for video um, okay. with a plugin called WPSSO, which I'll put in there. It's down here. Where is it? That's oh, right here. So I would get that plugin. You have Yoast. I uh, I don't know if you have a special check your page speed in a second. You probably do. Have some sort of page compression. Um, thin content or no value pages. I'm just going to say depends on keyword research. Uh, in terms of your conversion pages, so say for instance, if we look at this, wait, or sorry, your top traffic page. Let's look at uh, this one. We're hoping that this somehow leads into whatever your value offer is or some sort of uh, cross promotion. So you can see here, you have your you know controllable asset, you're promoting your newsletter. Ah, uh, sorry. Um, when we look at this though, you know, how many of your pages lead into your funnel, right? Your funnel should be whatever your so you have your first step, which is, you know, how they found you, the free content, you know, mm -hmm. your blog or the referral, however you said in the very beginning how people are finding you. But then right. after that, you know, that's what I was asking you is what is this next thing? Is it they're just contacting you and then you're talking to them? Is it an is it a free SEO audit? Is it a paid SEO audit? Is it, you know, some sort of... Uh, yeah. um, say, for example, see, um, once they contact us, yeah, you know, we do get in touch and talk to them, but we don't attract people through free audits. Or uh, our main goal is to rank on different um, different keywords. I would say, for example, if you put in keywords like Sun Prairie SEO or Milwaukee SEO or Madison SEO Agency um, or Wanakee SEO or SEO for Beauty Store, SEO for IoT business. Uh, these are a few of the keywords that I can remember offhand that we rank for right now. So a lot of leads do come in directly through these. And to be honest, um, we do focus on content because uh, and on guest posting a little bit uh, because we think that's you know more ethical and does make sense rather than uh, you know doing anything else. So. Yeah, so that that's basically it. So once we get leads out of these pages mainly, so that's direct uh, website traffic uh, that comes in once the website, once customer loves what he reads or you know something that he's looking for, he finds it. You know they contact us for the services, and they get in touch. We talk to them, find out what you know what's how so, wait, we wait. can help. Them. So when they read the yeah. blog, how do they contact you? They just go up here. Say for example, let's let's no, uh, let's do this. Uh, can you search for Milwaukee SEO? Say for example. 
Millbrook, yes, here. M uh, M I L W. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, I think we're on two. Okay. So we, I think we have a form. Yeah, there we go. Arrange export callback. So there's a call, uh, there's a form over there. Um, or if they want to call us, I guess we also have a phone number somewhere. Yeah. So in there itself, uh, we have address, phone number, everything, and there's a form for the customer. So call to action is there. Plus, if you search for other keywords like SEO for beauty store or SEO for IoT, I think um, you know those pages are also designed in the same way, where the customers get in touch with us. Okay, well, the, yeah, we have a problem because you contacted me because you want, or you said you know earlier you wanted to traffic or audit because you wanted to get more clients, right? That's right. Yeah. But if we look at this, you know. In the last 20 days, we only have like 23 visits from this. And if I'm guessing yeah. what the conversion rate on your contact is, maybe if it's like one, mm -hmm. you know, it's probably a good 20 days. But even then, you know, what's the conversion rate before you actually get an yeah, actual course. client? Absolutely. Right? So this yeah. could take you four or five months before you even maybe get a client out of it. So Absolutely. we're looking at a larger scale than that, right? We want to get you more. In, in fact, you could probably get more clients from this other page that we're looking at with the blog than you could from that one just because of the fact that people who are looking for that you know question over here on this page whatever it was um they might actually be looking for help so the point i'm trying to make is that you know these local pages you know if you want to do that it's great and like i said you want to definitely enable conversion tracking so you can see how many people you're actually bringing in when you look Absolutely. at this stuff, because you can see here, you can actually see by organic. If I filter by organic, let me filter by organic. How many people are actually, you know, converting on these pages in the last 20 days, right? We want to know that. But the oh, other yeah. thing is, you know, if we look at these different pages, let's just say, for instance, this page. I don't know if, you know, uh, this is a good example because it looks like you're actually getting more traffic for these other pages. But let's just say this was ranking number one, it was bringing in like 100 or 200 visits. Now, yeah. You know, if the conversion tracking was enabled, this could be a 0.5% conversion rate. But if you have that for multiple blog posts, which you can reach a way larger audience, you're going to bring be bringing in a lot more contacts in the long run. Now, the question is, how do you go about getting those contacts off of a blog post or some sort of content marketing? Well, the answer is most of the time, people who are trying to find you um, through like your content marketing are not going to be just wanting a contact. It doesn't, you know, really make sense for them if they're just reading and then it just says contact us. I mean, sometimes it does. So in my opinion, you want to figure out, you know, besides your newsletter, what kind of asset you can siphon these people to. And also at the time, same time, promote something for free or for a little, um, like a minimal barrier to entry in order to get them into your sales process. So say for instance, we have, um, your blog, let's say it's just, you know, you have in the next, you know, let's say, Two months after getting this audit, you go, okay, you know, Chase said that we need to get uh, 10 new, like, big posts going, or we need to, you know, increase our current rankings on the posts we already have and try to bring in an additional, like, say, 100% organic traffic growth. Mm -hmm. So here you are, two months later, 100% plus organic traffic, but you look at your conversions and you only see a 0.2% growth. So why is that? Well, if we look at this, you're not really promoting anything besides just this blog. So one of the things I always try to recommend is, you know, figuring out, okay, if this is your, if your target audience here is other SEOs and maybe you're doing white label, or maybe it's other business owners who are trying to find information about, you know, how to do SEO for their home business, whatever it is, yeah. you want to figure out the best way to bring them in. Most of them are a specific type of audience. How do you tell? Well, you go to your audience, Go to demographics, you go overview, and you see, okay, 2534. This is my organic audience last 20 days. Uh, looks like male, female split. Let's look at their interests. Overview. What do you want to bet? Show shoppers value shoppers. That's the same audience as me. So what does that mean? They like free stuff. How about free audit or free do-it-yourself template? Now, what happens is you have a couple options here. One of the options is you can um, give them like some sort of, uh, you know, 
free audit or whatever it is and you get content out of it, sort of like how I'm doing it with you, right? So right now, yeah. somebody literally just commented while I'm doing this audit for you. If you look in the comments, they said, when you have time, how long should a new business have their site up before getting an audit done? We are very new, open only less than a month now. So what does that mean? It means that by me doing this free audit right here, what is it doing? It's bringing in more people. This, this audit right here may not only get me, you know, uh, a client from this first live stream, but the recorded stream itself. And, you know, it might even uh, prompt you to say, hey, you know, Chase, I need the extra help or whatever. Can you help me with this? I, you know, it doesn't matter to me because I'm not fishing, right? I'm not trying to get, I'm not desperate yeah. for clients. I know how to how to get them really easily. So because yeah. I understand the basic principle of let me get people something for free because I know that that's the audience, right? Most people okay. don't have the time or the money to spend on this stuff, but they do have the time to watch these tutorials or whatever it is. And here's what they break down to. This, this audience, if they don't give me something in return in terms of money, let's say you don't buy anything, well, okay. I can then convert you maybe perhaps into a somebody who leaves me a review, right, on Google. Yeah. Um, so let's just say after this I say, you know, hey, hey man, could you just, you know, since I did this for you, could you leave me a little review on the audit I did? Chances are because I gave you this for free and you're not paying anything, you 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 will, you know, likely be right. able to return the favor, say, yeah, I'll give Chase a review, whatever. Um, and it's not like I'm exchanging, you know, say, hey, I'll do this for you in order for a review. I'm just doing something for you. And then, you know, if possible, could you leave me a review, that kind of thing. So what does that do? That increases authority. And what authority does is it increases value. So as you're not getting money, what you do is with the audience that you're getting, you give them two options. One of the options is I will give you this something for free, um, but at a later point, I'm probably going to contact you and sell you something, or I'm going to contact you and say, hey, could you leave me a review or whatever it is? Or yeah. I'm going to contact you and say, hey, you know, get the get the paid uh, audit or whatever it is. So the point is, is that when you're doing this, you want to do two things. On your blogs, one of them is to promote some sort of additional asset. Right now, you're pr promoting the newsletter but if I'm guessing, this probably isn't getting you any clients or really anybody leaving reviews or anything, right? Yeah, that's right. So it might be a better idea to give away something that will help increase authority or bring them into a better asset. Like maybe, because there's different assets, right? Wouldn't you agree yeah. that 3,000 YouTube subscribers is probably better than 3,000 people on an email list? Absolutely, yeah. So why not go for the YouTube subscribers, right? Yeah, absolutely. It does make sense. So... If I were you, I would figure out step one for your content marketing, which is where I'm telling you, you're going to get most of your customers and traffic because those other areas are only, you can only hit number one once in that local area. You can't really hit it, you know, a hundred times with different blog posts, that kind of thing, because that area is so small. So it's better in my opinion, if you can reach a national audience to just go for it. So content marketing, when you're doing it, do two things. Uh, or create two call to actions, create two call to actions. If you look at my blog post, what I'll do is I will, whoops, it's probably not even set up correctly. Oh, my website's not even indexed, so I'm being a huge hypocrite right now. Um, if we look at this, if it was working correctly, there'd be some sort of YouTube subscribe button or join the Facebook group here. And then in oh. there as well, it would be promoting other assets like, you know, get an audit done or whatever it is. Um, or get the free audit, whatever it is, right? Because that way at a certain point, if I want to go back into this Facebook group and say, hey, look, you know, I have a few spots open, uh, you know, or I'm just giving away a free audit because I know the people in here are going to want a free audit and then perhaps turn into a customer. It's easy to get people from that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I would probably end up doing if I were you is start doing remarketing because once you get people to a website, you're going to sell to them a lot better if you remarket to people who've already seen your stuff. So the long story short of the conversion pages is I would get those dialed in a little bit better and I would focus less on the email list and focus more on an asset that you know is going to convert higher like a um, maybe a YouTube subscriber or uh, maybe like a Facebook group member or something like that. And then actually utilize those lists to end up generate, generating reviews and giving them more free stuff. Because the more free stuff you give them, 
the more you actually end up selling. And the reason why for that is because if I do 10 audits in the next week or two, I'll probably get 10 people asking me for a paid audit. Um, and the reason for that is because I have so many people seeing these audits over and over that have, have, in, have joined these different assets that people want it more because they're seeing it happen. So it's really about capturing people and remarketing to them continuously. Awesome. Um, okay, so outdated pages, we'll skip that, and properly optimized categories, whatever. Multiple categories per post, I don't think you're doing. Uh, you just want to save away from that if you are. On categorized posts, I didn't see any. PDFs without optimizations, I didn't see any. Um, specific URL problems, let's check these out. Also, this text is in my, I, I don't know if it's my computer screen or what, but it's really hard for me to see the white on yellow. Oh, yeah. Okay. You might want to consider changing this to black and then the hover over to white or something. Yeah, it does make sense, yeah. You don't Definitely. want Google to pick up your site as like looking like you're cloaking links or anything. <laughs> um. If I'm giving you too much information, let me know. I'm sorry if I'm just rambling. I'm actually also jotting down notes side by side, so it's really, really helpful. Okay, and I'm not trying to like bag on you or anything or like tell you like you're doing things wrong. I'm just trying to help you as much as possible. Absolutely. So URLs look fine. Obviously, one, two, three, four, five, six. Once you get to that URL point, you don't really want to go over that. But yeah. breadcrumbs, I don't see that on the website. Those little, you know, hashes. No. To go to a yeah. blog post, I would get those on there, or to okay. any page. Make sure you know so people know where they are, and then you would add that in schema as well on Yoast. Okay. Site search, I'm gonna skip. I don't know if you want to set that up, but you might want to. 404s, we had some. Hit some 301s, same old stuff. Um, in terms of your internal link structure for those 86 main pages we saw, we're disregarding all the other ones. Um, So you're linking with the buttons and then this link, but the services don't really have a drop down, which you might want to end up doing at a certain point because you can actually rank the services and it actually will help you improve the overall value of your site. Um, and that's how you would get more of the uh, internal links going to your main pages. But you want to just try to create as many um, pages that are going to represent yourself as the person who's trying to rank for a certain category. So if we take, for instance, the person who's ranking number one for SEO expert, Bradley Shaw, who actually wound up ranking this after he took one of my courses, which is pretty funny. Um, you know, he has all these different services and he's internally linking all of them to like his home pages and his, you know, different main pages. And he's ranking a lot of them because of that. Um, but his overall domain authority and, you know, page authority, that kind of thing, is really high, not just because of his link building tactics, which I don't really focus on, but also because of his lot of, a lot of his internal link ta linking tactics. Oh. Um, so I would say, you know, that might be a good idea. You can also see here, look, you know, he's converting a ton of people off his website. He knows his target audience, you know, get a free SEO consultation valued at a thousand dollars, whatever. And then that's how he gets a lot of contacts by putting on all of these, putting them, putting all these on his pages. So if you wanted to follow somebody who's really doing stuff well, this guy has a really good layout that's good to copy. Okay. Um, or at least follow, maybe not copy. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so I would work on the internal links, but more in terms of the content, because you don't really have a lot of content there. In terms of the external links, I don't know, you might be doing okay there, I'm just gonna skip it. Keyword mapping done, no, you wanna do that. Images missing alt tags. You got some there, 44. The URLs themselves. Looks like there's just a bunch of Gravatar logos. They look okay. Title tags too short. This is just more. That's gonna, I'm just gonna put NA on all these because this has to do more with after you do the keyword mapping and actually look at the intent for these individual pages. Yep. On page, pretty much anybody can do. You just have to go through Screaming Frog and see if things are too short or too long, whatever. Page speed, let's go into here. Also, I don't know if I told you this earlier, but you do need to put your SSL on your site at some point. Yeah, absolutely. 
that is something we're considering. Uh, but is it possible, like, uh, could it happen that rankings could get affected due to an SSL implementation? Can um, that happen? Wait, say it again. Uh, could the rankings be affected when well, the SSL is... SSL is actually a small ranking factor, so you might actually get a boost from it. Yeah. So you got to... Because... Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say you have a 7.1 second load time on your homepage, so you might want to fix okay. that. Okay. What were you going to say, though? Okay. So uh, what I heard was uh, we were planning to do this, like add a SSL license to it, um, but we stopped because... We researched about it a bit, and we somebody told us that you know that's you need to migrate the entire site and do a lot of uh, on-page uh, structuring and m migrating and 301s and all that. So that's a big hassle, and you could end up losing a lot of your rankings. Um, so when we did that, that you know, so that made us not to do not to go ahead with it. So. You know, we didn't go ahead with the license. So, do you think that could happen, or? I mean, you have. Let's see. Hold on. Hundred and fifty-two organic visits in the last twenty days. I wouldn't be too worried about it. Okay. If you had maybe, even if you had thousands, I would still make the recommendation that you switch. Because the thing okay. is, is that you might get a small like. You know ranking decrease but like for a little bit but it'll come back i mean it, it can't the thing is is that it can't be worse than what happened to my site recently where <laughs> i uh, had somebody do a migration they left the no index tag in the entire site and this happened oh <laughs> so it went from getting thousand you know nine thousand impressions a day to like one thousand whoa that's not yeah. gonna happen <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so when you do your migration, people just make sure you have your no index tag put back in afterwards. But anyways, yeah. So, um, you are going to be okay. If you do the SSL, what I would do is just contact the hosting company, make sure they like walk you through, you know, all the 301s correctly. Cause they have like, uh, tools. I think that just help you do it automatically. Okay. Perfect. Um, regularly publishing content. I'm just going to kind of skip some of these things. Uh, organization markup. You just want that on the home page just for home page. Yeah. Local business markup, you want that just for the location pages. About markup, you might want to put that in there and a contact markup. Blog markup, let's see. Yeah, article is probably fine. You want breadcrumbs, and then yep. OG data will get fixed when you put that uh, that APSSO plugin in. Smusher and broken link check. You might want to put those in there. Uh, Google my business optimization. I'm gonna skip some of this stuff because at this point. Um, yep. A lot of this doesn't really have to do with. So just to be honest with you, like, you could go and fix all these things, but yep. a lot of your problem right now, I don't think, really has to do with um, SEO per se. It has yep. to do with you. I mean, you came to me and said, "Look, I want to do lead generation." Now, a lot of that can be done without optimizing your site. Like, you don't need as you know from your referrals and from your direct traffic, that kind of thing, where you're getting your clients and you're making a good amount of money from, you don't really need this to be a thousand percent amazing. But what you do okay. need to work on, in my opinion, is one, figuring out how you represent yourself. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you can fix all these things and go through them, but that's really just gonna be, in my opinion, I mean, it's gonna help your SEO overall, but what it's gonna really do is kind of help you figure out, you know, how you want to take that and, you know, sort of use that as your quality control for your clients. But at the end of the day, a lot of it's not going to bring you more clients or more money. It's just going to help you sort of represent yourself better. Um, okay. But the clients like, a, you know, that's only going to be in the SEO world. You know, you're not going to, the clients are going to know any different, whether or not it's okay to index tags or that kind of thing. But at least you'll know for when you go in and do this stuff, you know, not to do these certain things or to do conversion tracking. Um, Got it. 
But the next part is your content marketing and how you're bringing people in. So the three parts is one, work on how you represent yourself. Number one thing to do, always do conversion tracking first. And, and the reason why I say this isn't just because, you know, everybody says, oh, do conversion tracking or, you know, whatever. It's just because at the end of the day, it doesn't even matter if you do it for you. It just matters that when you look at your clients, let me just show you one of my clients. This is somebody who's paying us, I think, $3,000 a month for SEO. And I have somebody else helping me with, like, I'm just doing quality control. They're doing a lot of the implementations and I'm splitting, like, the projects with them. I think it's, like, 30%, they're getting, like, 30% of the project overall or whatever. So, if I look at this and I look at organic traffic, they look at all goals. So obviously there wasn't a huge increase here. You know, it actually went down by 0.36% and there was some drops here. The thing is, is once you get to a certain amount of traffic and you've had a client for long enough, I don't do mm -hmm. month to month reporting. What I'll actually do is do it by the last three months because that okay. to me, there's not as many fluctuations and you can show way better steadier progress. Um, so you can see, even though the traffic, uh, actually, sorry, the traffic went up. It went from 32,000 to 35,000, which doesn't even look like that much, right? If you showed somebody that, they're like, oh, well, that's okay, right? But if we look at the goal completions, you know, they went from making $25,000 to $29,000. And then if we look at the last six month comparison, they went from, hold on, making, you know, $60,000 to 38,000. So that's a lot different than looking at traffic. And if they're not making any money in the beginning or they're not making close, if you can show them in yeah. six months that they had a 56% increase in, in conversions, that is well worth $3,000 a month, especially if their conversion is worth whatever it is, right? Because at that point, six, six times, watch this, six times 3,000, whoops. equals whoops sorry six is that right six times eighteen thousand yeah. so their roi off the website so far minus the seo is you know forty two thousand right yeah uh so it's really not hard for me to show them a number like that and either ask for a higher retainer or more hours or whatever um or just to have them keep me around, even if, you know, last month I only got, let's say, let's see, look at the last whatever days. They only got, you know, what is, whatever it is, 8,000 visits versus the 11,000 for whatever reason. I don't, you know, it could be fluctuations. They could be, because the thing is, once you start getting into big traffic, this stuff fluctuates yeah. like crazy. This could just be one page. If I look at the actual pages or say, for instance, they want SEO done on a new page and they want us to stop focusing on another page, whatever it is. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the point is, is that, you know, when you're looking at it this way, it's way more important and, and you're going to, you're going to keep, yeah. th this is what scales in my opinion, not, the, yeah, not the traffic. So yeah. that's number one. The next thing is, Number two, um, work on your internal, or sorry, your work on bringing people in with your content marketing because that's where you're going to get a ton of clients. That's where I get all of my clients. Like even as you can see right here, you know, I got, I'll probably get some clients from it and it's from bringing people in by fig figuring out what your target audience is. For instance, f people who like free stuff you know, yeah. turning that into content if you can, or doing your content marketing, you know, maybe interviewing experts, whatever it is. I don't know. I'm um, doing Q and A's yeah. on your site yeah. and then bringing traffic to that and then siphoning that to some sort of free asset or something that you can get, you know, leverage off of. And then the third part is, um, the actual internal workflow, which I don't know how you do this. I don't know. Like, you know, if you're doing, um, like projects. I mean, that's the part that I would like to talk to you about at some point if you'd want to. Sure. Um, but you know, this is, in my opinion, 
the hardest part. This right here, in my opinion, is the easiest part. You know, representing yourself and because that can be, you can always fix that and you can always um, bring more people in. But it doesn't matter how much traffic you have or how good you look. At the end of the day, if your product oh, isn't something that you can scale or isn't quality yeah. enough, you're going to always be struggling with this and never actually spending the time on this stuff. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. So based on uh, experience, uh, in terms of performance, like giving quality services to the client, uh, we are able to go ahead. So far, you know, we, we didn't have any unsatisfied customers because, as I said, our main goal was focusing on increasing the traffic and sales for the customers. So we do a lot of guest posting, uh, which is relevant to the niche. Um, and then we ha get in touch with a few influencers in the segment for the clients. We don't do it for ourselves, but we just do it for our customers. Say, for example, there, you know, we had a customer who was selling uh, beauty products. So we got in touch with an influencer on Instagram and um, gave her some free stuff. And she went ahead and made a post uh, on her on her profile, which boosted up the sales quite a bit. So we keep on trying these methods and then content, uh, we, the basic, uh, the content uh, sharing technique is joining groups and spreading the word around on social media platforms on Google Plus communities and uh, Facebook. So we get a quite a bit of traffic for customers over there. So, so far, none of, I, I wouldn't say any of our customers are unsatisfied uh, with the services because uh, in the beginning, when I, as I said, you know, our main goal in terms of SEO, it's not ranking, it's actually growing the business for the customer. And um, so we tend to find ways, as I said, you know, guest posting is one of them, uh, contact influencers is, is the second thing, or social media, uh, in, in, you know, increasing uh, postings on social media is another, another thing that we do. Uh, apart from that, making sure that the customer's uh, pages are always updated with good content. So what we do is we follow Google Trends uh, when a customer comes to customers. So we, uh, we check for uh, trending topics on Google Trends and make articles around that subject, which also drives a lot of traffic to the website. Uh, so I think these are some, some of them that I could remember right now. Um, then apart from that, so we also for a few customers, like for the beauty um, store cut that we were working on, we focused on videos as well. So what we did was we asked their, you know, them to hire a, a small model and record a, a, you know, small presentation on how to apply makeup, how to remove makeup, such videos, and that really boosted. So we ran a a, a video campaign like on YouTube. We ran an ad for for their for her, and it boosted up, uh, you know, a couple of some sales for her. So that was also pre. So these are the few things I would say, you know, that we remember so far. Um, I remember so far. Okay, so say I'm a local, and I just asked this the other day. Sam, Sam, this computer repair site right here. Yeah. And I just contacted you. For. Uh, I just co I'm contacting you right now, starting, starting right now for. This URL, and I just called you right now. I don't know anything about you. Let me just mm -hmm. send it to you really quick. there it is so I you know I'm saying hey how's it going you know my name is Chase this is a computer repair site I have you know it's not ranking as well as I'd like it to it's ranking number three um, you know what do you guys do? I just want to get a little bit more information about you guys what do you do okay um, which website is reliablecomputerhelp.com so um, the first thing I would definitely check is uh, the you know I would check on AREPS first of all the amount of backlinks or um, the number of pages that the website has. Let's go ahead and check. None. Okay. And then how many pages does the website have? Like, you know, if you can run it on Screaming Frog or, you know, just take a random check on the website itself. I think, okay. So that's pretty much. Yeah. 
so we got like seven results. Okay. Uncategorized. Okay. Um, second of all, if we come back to the to the website just for a second. Okay, and scroll down a bit in terms of content. Just just to see how much content is there on the are these clickable links or I think so. No. They're just no. The page okay. the page haven't been built out. All right. So looking at this, you know, my first suggestion or first thing that I would do for the client is to go ahead and add more content to the website, uh, add more pages to the website, add more uh, insight of what they're doing. Second of all, I don't see a, uh, a CTA on here. I don't know if there's a phone number or con. Okay, there we go. There is. All right, so there is a call now button. The next thing I would say is where the contact button is there. Are they listed on Google My Business? Are they? Uh, yeah, they're right here. Because the target is, okay, that's perfect. Can you, uh, this is your account, right? If, if This is just an okay. example. I used to, this used to be ranking number one and I just pretty much tore the website apart. And uh, it's just like a kind of an example website. All right. Perfect. So I would say I will start with the content first. Uh, check on the competition as well, um, and start answering questions on platforms like uh, Quora. Spread the, uh, you know, because there are, if you talk about computer, there are a lot of people looking for solutions. I will create videos, uh, YouTube videos. I will add them to the website as well. Uh, I'll definitely add a blog section on the website where we can just give away a free tutorials and stuff uncommon problems uh, like virus update and stuff like that um, apart from that let's see these are the few things I would say you know for the first month I would say you know this would be something that I would start off doing uh, just to go ahead and grow I would say make a presence at least okay so step number one you'd basically just kind of go over a phone call with them and kind of yeah. just go through their website and just like find some key points that you'd like probably want to help with right yes Okay, so that's generally how it goes, though, right? There's that's is this pretty much the layout, or is it any different than this? This is exactly you know how it goes. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. is this over a screen share? You're just calling them and kind of telling them like over the phone. Uh, no, uh, it's actually on the phone itself, um, uh, one on one, because uh, I don't do a screen share, but I think it's a good idea because most of the customers don't have Skype, so they are on their you know on their work phone and they're just calling in. Uh, so I just go ahead and explain them. Can you open up your website? So they say, yeah, I'm on the website. So do you see this? Uh, sometimes I have to explain them um, using a competitor's website. So I ask them, you know, okay, uh, I see another business that's you know doing the same thing as you do. So can you open up their website? So do you see how much um, content they have on their homepage? They have videos, and you know, this is where they click on. The phone number is visible. You know, they don't have to click anywhere. So you know, things like that. So the, the customer kind of understands from there and picks it up. Okay, so these are the things they're missing. So we go ahead and start off from there. Uh, and then in terms of uh, marketing them, you know, once the website, because there's no point of doing, uh, answering questions, creating videos or doing uh, anything if the website is, it, it, lo it does not attract people or it does not tell the people, okay, click here, to call me or you know click here or to or do this or this is what we do right so so the very first important thing is to go ahead and fix the website up you know just to add more content as you said you know on, on my website as you said the tags a couple of things that are not visible uh, to a normal naked eye um, in terms of you know uh, the people you know like who do not have the expertise like you do so they won't notice it but once we look internally you, we find, yeah, things are missing on there. The similar thing, that's the target goal. That's what I'm, well, you know, that's what I try to look for and pitch in. That's it. Yeah. Okay, so sounds good. So that's sort of the call. They call, and then so how does that usually, so first of all, how many of these calls do you get a month, just out of curiosity? In a month? Uh, in four. See, we, um, it's a mixed call. We get a lot of calls from web design, and we get a I'm getting, let, let me see, this month I got like seven calls for SEO and I got more calls for web design. I think I got 
Calls plus emails, actually. So uh, I'm just giving you a total mixture. Okay. Uh, so wherein the email comes in, you know, we just book an appointment. Like I reply back, okay, let's do a phone conversation at this time and let's go through things. And for web design, I think I got 12 uh, mixture of emails and calls. And that's all through organic, right? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay, so no that's, paid, nothing. So that's pretty good. And and most of that you said was like, you think some of it's organic and then some of it's like referral type, you know, and then like direct yes. visits. Yes. Okay, so that's pretty good. So you got seven calls from SEO. So, and then how many of these people, just out of curiosity, actually wound up signing up in the last thirty days? Well, um, I think we have um, web design clients are pending because they have a. Um, so we started off, I think 14 are in now, uh, in total. So out of yeah. the out of the 19 calls, you got 14. Yes. And, so, and what those um, and like what are those uh, on average equal like five hundred dollars, thousand dollars each? Well, not exactly. Uh, for web design, um, we have like, I would say a few of them are 700, 600, and a few of them are three thousand to four thousand range. So I'm not sure how to average that. Seven hundred. Yeah. So, so in the last thirty days, it was like around fourteen times. Let's just say, on average, like a thousand dollars. So you would say, yeah. you would say that's about correct. Yes. Okay, and yeah. how much of that is like goes? To, okay, so that's that's pretty good, right? And then, huh? Wow. Okay, so that's actually really good. Then you're doing pretty well. Um, so fourteen thousand, and then. So I don't even know why you're asking me because you're 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 doing better than I am in terms of the client or uh, intake. I mean, the only thing I would say, really, you know, in order to get this up, is I would start because I was gonna say, you know, maybe work on the audit process if these aren't converting well, or you know, um, you know, figure out how you lay this out. But I think really, I think your bottleneck then would be um, just bringing in more clients, which at, you know, at that point, I would say. Um, I would so, check yeah. this series out. Have you checked this out yet? I made a block. Whoops, where did it go? Did it get removed? Where did it go? Oh, I guess they didn't transfer it over. Okay, I have to tell them about that. Um, How to get a six times? Okay. Where the heck did it go? I guess I'll just I go think check. I think you made videos about this. Is that? Yeah, there's an entire cl playlist. Yeah. I think I saw a few of them. I, I, yeah. Where did it I go? So annoying. Is this it? Okay, so I have to find it, but it's because I just migrated this over, and these people are just annoying the hell out of me. Um, what I would what I would try to do is pro probably follow like the sort of the outline that I was going through. Um, yep. You know, video works really well. I mean, I honestly like. I think if you, this is what you're pulling in already, man, like I think you're probably doing fine. I mean. Um, the only thing at that point I think is just figuring out how you want to bring in more clients because a lot of this stuff is, you know. Yeah, the only uh, the only thing being because we do most of our things in house, like we got in house like content writers, we got in house uh, people who are handling the back end work of the SEO, like you know guest posting stuff like that, finding new uh, posts. So we do uh, pick up a few services like. Uh, you know, guest posting services uh, from different channels. So I would say, yeah, you know, the really the aim actually is to go ahead and um, unite everything all together rather than and launch. I would say, you know, I would like to increase that number to a hundred thousand. You know, that's actually the target. Uh, I would say that's the goal. So this is um, the current intake right here, 14K. What is the uh, current, I mean, you don't have to share the numbers if you don't want to, but I'm just curious, what is the current, um, or at least ballpark, uh, over, or sorry, gross profit of the agency right now? Um, on a monthly basis, I would say, yeah, we, I think we take on eight, I think so, yeah, approximately, I haven't calculated exactly, I think we take on eight approximately, yeah. 8,000 or 80,000? Yes. Eight thousand per month. Yeah. Okay, so then what is this fourteen thousand number coming from? So that's the total uh, revenue that we get, but we have to pay the employees. 
No, 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 uh, not we... not net profit. I'm talking about gross profit. What's your overall gross? Oh, okay. So if you just just give me one. I'm just checking. I just have to double check. I'm, I could get back to you on that because I'm, I'm just, just looking for a ballpark. Just like some is it like 10k, 20k. You could guess. Uh, I think it's it's close to. I would say close to 20k. I would say okay. uh, maybe more sometimes. I don't know. Yeah. And then the overhead you would say is about like 12k, for the. Yeah. Okay. So if we're looking at 20k gross, 8k net, and that's personal net, right? That's what you're make you're bringing back per month. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay, that's still really good, and that's and how and like is that been, um, like reoccurring for more than like three three months? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say on an average, we haven't we rarely lose clients. Actually, that's the the plus point, I would say, so far because. Only one, I would say, just a few SEO clients have gone just because the reason being they they were happy and they said like, okay, let's, they want to save money and stuff like that and they will come back later on and some, some stuff like that. So, well, so yeah, I would say on an average, it has been, last time I saw like, we have a customer who's been with us for two years now. Oh, wow. uh, we have a customer, average, I would say they leave after six to seven months, after six to seven months. Okay, so six, seven months. And how many clients did you say you probably have right now? Like 10? It, right now, I, I would say, yeah, 14 is going on. I think, yeah, if I grab the last project, uh, let me just check my account. Wait, that can't be right because you said in the last 30 days you got 14 new clients. Yeah, so the 14 projects are going on, I would say, this, this month that we grabbed it. Okay, but out of the, so the, I guess we didn't talk, we didn't say this right. So out of the seven calls for, SEO and the 12 for web design, how many turn into a client? Oh, okay. So out of the SEO projects, we got like four from here and eight from the web design that were completed. So you uh, got a few of them? Yeah. So you got 12 instead, but you have 14 clients total. No, not total. A total are different. Like a uh, few of them, two I would say out of 14 are still pending. Because I've just sent in invoice, they have not paid it yet, so I, um, I wouldn't consider them as as clients yet. But this isn't um, this isn't making sense. So before the last thirty days, how many clients did you have? Before right now, okay. Let me just pull up my CRM. Just give me one. The only reason I'm trying to figure this out is I just want to know your conversion rate because I want to figure out where your bottleneck is. So right now we got like uh, twenty six approximately. Oh, you have 26 clients. Yeah. Okay, so you got 26 clients, and you're making about, let's just say, 20k per month. So that means each client has to be paying on average around, you know, $800. Approximately. Yeah. We got few um, really small businesses. I would say, you know, work from home moms like those as well. So we don't charge much from them. So yeah. Okay. So. And then you'd say half about half of those clients are actually out of the twenty six are like SEO, or would you say it's lower? Lower. Um, most of them are design clients, but then we they, you know they come back to us for SEO as well. So kind of both. Okay, so, so yeah. would, yeah. would you say it's like six or eight SEO clients? Yeah, uh, yeah, that would be fair to say. Okay, so the thing here is what I'm seeing is that. You're doing really well for the, S the the web design side of things, but for the SEO side of things, I don't know how stable this is. You said that. Yeah, that's okay. fluctuates a lot. The reason being, I would say, because the web we started off with web design alone. Like we didn't start with SEO, we didn't start with digital marketing. We just started with web design. So a lot of people who wouldn't know the company would know it only for web design. It was just, I think, two years ago approximately I guess uh, when we started off with SEO and we hired and we started outsourcing and we also then we stopped outsourcing because it didn't work out so SEO is just picking up for us uh, I wouldn't say we have reached our goal or something like that yeah okay so you haven't reached your goal in terms of SEO so if I were to take like say for instance the next two months 
and say, you know, out of your current, let's just let's just alt, let's let's separate your web design agency and and just say that that's separate for, from SEO for a second, and let's just say okay. you only did SEO. Now, in that case, let's say you have six clients right now, and on average you're making how much off that out of the you know six the SEO clients. Out of the six, let's say, um, I will give you the exact of a pre close. Just give me one minute. And also the average time span, how long they've been around. If, if all six of them or eight of them, whatever, have been around for the last 12 months or not. Yeah, so two for yeah, just give me one minute. So, um, so two clients are paying us like 600 um, per month, and then for SEO, and there's one who's paying us 800, and uh, we got three who are paying 700. Okay, so these are actually a lot of the lower retainers then. Yes. Okay, so we got, and I'm yeah. assuming a lot of these people are local. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. how long have they been around? Just out of curiosity. So the 600 paying clients, um, both of them have been with us for eight months now. The $800 client is new, I think, three months now. Yeah. And the seven out of 700, I would say, on average, of three of them have been for six. Uh, five to six months. Okay, and overall, so here's here's the thing. If we look at this now, you're selling SEO to these six people, and yeah. you want to scale this, right? You want to let's just say in the next two months you want to bring in twelve. You want to you want to double it, right? Yeah. So first of all, if you want to scale that, we have to think about how are you bringing how are you dealing with these people monthly, right? I'm assuming you're probably doing some sort of monthly reporting. You know. Oh, it's it's actually um, yeah. So I hate sending reports like manual reports. So I do a one-on-one -on -one call conversation with them, wherein I make them log in on the analytics because most of them, to be honest, they don't understand the reports that I send in. If you send in an analytics report, you know they cannot understand. So I have to do calls with them, explain them where we are. Uh, mainly, they're happy just because the reason being they see a lot of leads and conversions coming in, so they're happy with that. How are they seeing so, leads if you're not doing conversion tracking, though? Because uh, the, well, money comes into the bank account, or they check an email, and customers are because they're not investing in anything else. Right okay, now. they're just assuming that so, the calls are coming from the marketing. So, because they're not doing anything, so when the customers' emails come in, or somebody calls them, or you know, it's working out for them, so they yeah. So they, they don't mind it. Okay. That's the only but it could be that the calls are just picking up from some other stores. Could like, be, yeah. Say, yeah, for that, instance, that. Facebook ads. Yeah. And didn't you say that part of what you were doing was also social media? And you're just bring, you're like bringing in ads as well and bringing in clients that way? No, only we, do, we don't do Facebook ads. Uh, for when we, we do ads for YouTube only uh, as of now. When we talk about Facebook, what we do is, for example, if a client is from a real estate uh, sector or you know beauty sector, we go on Facebook or Google Plus, or you know, and we join communities and groups belonging to that particular you know that specific niche, and then we post probably every day some something about the company or some uh, a paragraph or something that we can post on and, and a link to the website. Okay. So. And are, yeah. are you, is this project based monthly or is it like hourly based just out of curiosity? Um, this is monthly based, yeah. No, I mean, but the way you're doing the service, are you doing like 20 hours per per client or is it like, is it like, you know, you're doing, or is it, cause like, I'm just curious cause if you want to scale this, like I said, we want to figure out, you know, what yeah. you're actually going to be doing within those actual monthly retainers, right? You're right. Hold on one second. I have to answer the door one second. Okay. Okay, sorry, I'm back. Okay. So, 
the number of um, hours I would say that we spend on every client, yeah, I would say you write like 20 to 30 hours, I would say in a month. Okay, that's about average. So now if yeah. we look at that, let's just say 20 to 30. And I don't care if you're spending one hour, I don't care if you're spending five hours, I just want to know like if this is the approximate. Yeah. Um, calculator, okay. So let's just say 20 to 30, we'll just average it out at 25. We'll divide that by like a $600 project. That's twenty-four dollars an hour. Okay. So if we look at that, you're probably—I don't know how much are you paying your employees, just out of curiosity, for the SEO, because you're not doing all of it yourself, are you? No, no, not everything, because um, most of them are also do lead generation for us in terms of websites. So they, you know, um, because every employee that we have is also not only doing, you know, for the clients, but um, their primary goal is also to get make sure they at least get one lead every day every month right so okay. most of the the payouts uh that the client that the, the employees you know they generated for themselves um oh you're paying them by the uh, lead not exactly you know but well, i also pay them uh, extra as well on in terms of uh, the hours they put in on extra clients as well so that so, is also there. So on average, how much does somebody make off this six hundred dollar project for twenty to thirty hours? Uh, uh, we would pay them like approximately eight to ten dollars an hour on an average. Okay, so they're probably making like let's say ten, or sorry, twenty per, twenty to thirty percent of the project, which is about right. Yeah. Um, so let's just say thirty percent of the project would be. Uh, 600 divided by, or sorry, 600 times 0.3 is 180. So the net off of that is about 420. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's probably not the net. That's there's probably still uh, there's probably still other expenses that go into that. Yeah. Um. So we got. But if you think about it, 420, no matter what, even if these people are, are doing 20 to 30, that's still not a very high profit margin. Um, yeah. And for SEO. Yeah. For SEO, right. If you look at like my margins right here, I have, you know, a client that's paying 3000 and I'm paying my employee 30% of that and that's 900 And I'm still taking back uh, basically a $2,100 net profit. Um, yeah. And so my point is what I'm saying, the reason why I wanted to break all this stuff down is because yeah. now I can tell you that there is a problem here, not because of the fact that you're not making enough money, you're obviously making enough money between SEO and web design, but yeah. if you wanna make more with SEO, we definitely would wanna do some work in terms of what you're doing around this, because yeah. this model is not gonna be something that you're gonna probably wanna scale. I mean, you can scale that if you want to this way, but it's gonna be a lot harder in my opinion than if you were to sort of replicate the model that I've built out. Okay. That you're gonna whoops um, probably want to scale whoops. and so like you know this is a long process and i'd have to like kind of go over this with you more but you know one of the things that i would probably you know definitely recommend first of all is the first of all building the authority because the reason why that you know i can charge a good amount is because of some of the things that i've done around yeah. building a brand um yeah. and i can tell you how to do that and replicate that process it's actually not that difficult um, it has to do a lot with content marketing as one. It also has to do with remarketing. It also has to do with building authority through review generation, which all of those things are little things that you could spend 10 minutes doing each day, which would within like three to six months, um, already bring this up, I think to like at least a few thousand. Um, but the next thing too, is how you're, uh, structuring these out. When I do an audit, say for instance, I wanted to sell to you right now. I wanted to say, Hey, you know what? I want to help you with your your stuff right here. I want to, I want to do all this stuff for you. First of all, yeah. the page speed optimization, we need to fix that. Let's do it for 250. And then I would, no, I'm not saying that right now. I'm just telling you, right? Remarketing. Yeah. Boom. I'm going to do that for you as well. And all this stuff you need, right? You're going to want to do it anyways, whether I do it or whether you do it or whether somebody else does it for you. That's the point, right? That's why people hire you. But once you put all this yeah. stuff together, you basically have something laid out like this, where you have some sort okay. of package where it's like $1,400, right? So oh, once okay. you do that, 
Um, and say, for instance, it's a larger website, say you want to do like 10 to 19 pages to start out with. Boom, $2,000. And then you do all the stuff that's within SEO. But the thing is, is that you're also really good at doing lead generation, not just off SEO, right? You bring in clients with, uh, for the customers with video, you bring in clients or, or customers to clients with through social. So the point is, is that um, by building out project-based work, this is a lot easier to scale. It's a lot easier to show value. And it's a lot easier to maintain because your reporting no longer looks like a monthly phone call. It just looks like, okay, here's how many conversions we you know, we went to from the last three months to compare to the previous three months. And here's all the stuff we did. And, and watch this. You want to know something cool? Literally within the first three months of a client doing you doing SEO or doing any of this stuff for them, I guarantee yeah. you for 80% of them, you'll be able to at least triple their conversions. You want to know why? Because yeah. most of them don't have conversion tracking. So, <laughs> yeah. do you get it? So yeah, you, you take it, yeah. you take away the um, the confusion of how do I make yeah. this something that's really complicated and, and how do I, you know, do all this crazy reporting and all that stuff. Just like you said, right? I just make it easy. I just yeah. call them and you turn yeah. it into, I'm just going to do things that I know work. One of the things I know that works is if I go to through site colon name of website, reliable computer help, boom. I can tell you that if I put something in here, like five star reviews on all these different pages and add qualifiers, yep. that will probably up the click through rates, which, you know, probably will end up ranking them higher and then will probably lead to higher conversions. I also know, just like you told me earlier, if I then also go on that page and put a call to action, because there isn't one, well, that's probably gonna up your conversions. Boom, I just made you another $500 this month, right? Yeah, so <laughs> it's about taking, yeah, it's about taking that it's about taking information that they don't already know and then yeah. selling it to them in a way that you're also helping them. Because one of the biggest things about online marketing is not yeah. just doing the services, but tracking them. Because it's one thing to do something for somebody, but that doesn't scale. If I tell you right now that I just did a bunch of stuff, I just, I just, uh, I just made you a thousand dollars. Would you believe me? I don't know. I mean, maybe you might you might think that I just made you twenty thousand dollars for telling you this stuff. But if I were to go in and go, look, I just did all this stuff for you. I'm gonna look at this in a month from now because you're now a client, and I'm gonna show you in the next month. If I look back at this, your conversions are gonna go up by thirty percent, and that alone right now is already worth you know two thousand dollars for you to pay me. It, it sounds it sounds kind of dumb, but you know. The point is, is that you're not going to tell them that up front. You're going to tell them that after they paid, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and the point is, is that, you know, it's not about keeping clients around in order to make money. It's more about f figuring out how you can scale this because it's cool to have 10 clients that are paying you $3,000 or a thousand dollars, whatever it is. But yeah. it, what happens when you can't scale, scale past those 10 clients? Cause this happened to me before I had 20 clients and I was making 30 K a month. But there was none of this. There was just hourly work. I didn't have, I had, you know, half the clients were emailing me every day asking me what I was doing. They weren't, you know, a lot of them left because it wound up being something that I couldn't manage because, you know, I was trying to teach people everything. I was trying to maintain quality. Okay. So if I were you, I would really start to um, drill into more of the SEO side of things and figure out what your your different processes look like because you have the web design down and you also have because of you have that web design you're going to be able to siphon people from the web design to seo which is what you're already doing yeah. but um it's in my opinion not built out enough for you to be able to scale just from what i'm seeing and the oh, numbers yeah. you you showed me so step number one is figuring out how you're going to be creating your free content and building your authority and building your brand around SEO and representing yourself as somebody who really does SEO um, and web design. I mean, you already have the web design side things down. You're making a lot of money, which, you know, or a good amount of money from that, which, you know, you're ahead of most people. But next is bringing people into your SEO, you know, lowest barrier to entry. Right now you have that, um, that initial call, but yeah. If I were to ask you out of the six SEO leads or whatever in the last 14, uh, last 30 days, how many of those turned into SEO clients? On an average. No, no just last, just last 30 days. How many, how many SEO clients did you get? 
last 30 days. Okay, yeah, four, I, I would say, yeah. You got four? Last 30 days, right? Just give me one minute. Oh, we got seven lead. Okay, wait. Oh, sorry, I'm, my bad. Two. Two of them. Two. Okay, yeah. so, but before that, you only had four, right? Yes. And how long, and you said those other ones, okay, that's not right. Because you said all these other clients are eight months, three months, and five to six months. Yeah. So these are, I would, what would you consider a client? The client who's already made a payment, right? So I'm just confused between, like, we've just sent invoices to them. Those are not paid yet. So, you know, I'm just waiting for them, for the payment to come in. So once they pay, that will be done. Okay. So then you're going to have another two on top of the existing ones over here? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you'll have then. If, if the payment get goes through, yeah. So then you'll have eight SEO clients total. Yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah, that's right. So if that's correct, then if you have two new people and it took you until three months ago to get these two new people, that's obviously a problem, right? You want to get more SEO clients than that. Meaning that, you know, in the last three months, if this is correct, I don't know if you're telling me the numbers correctly, but like three months ago was the last, you know, last client you got. Yeah. And that was only one. And before that, it was five to six months. So on average, yeah. you're only getting, you know, one to two new SEO clients per, let's say, um, every couple months. Every couple months, yeah. So that's not where you want to be, right? And you also want to be making higher retainers. So I think a lot of this also, you know, has to do with your selling process. I, you know, when you told me that all you do is a phone call and I'm not trying to bag on you, you know, I don't think that's going to cut it. If I were you, I would try to give them something like this, you know, take the template I have, just do it in front of them. I mean, it's not difficult. You just follow these different sections. This right here has like an 80% sales rate to clients. Like it's really high. Maybe it's not that high. Maybe it's like 60 or 70, but you take all this and sell that to them. I mean, this is what uh, I've been able to use to sell really hard to people. And if I were you, I would at least do some sort of audit in front of them with the screen share. Um, yeah. And then I would also work on your lead gen for this because it's a numbers game, as you already know. Yeah. I would follow that how to get SEO client series. It's on YouTube. I have like a bunch of different videos. You know, you can do meetup groups. You can do video. You can do blogging. You know, this is a huge list of how to get SEO clients. And um, I've been even using these methods myself. This, this, is, this is the exact reason why I'm doing this audit right now because I know that this is my first step for people to contact me and turn to a client. So that's why I'm giving away audits is because I know if I do a bunch of audits and I record it, people are gonna end up contacting me for it, turn into a client. Um, and like I said, you know, I know it works. So if you wanted to follow the similar outline, I would say just go do it, you know, um, but that's totally up to you. Got it, yeah. Um, oh man, sorry for all the info. I mean, this is the longest audit I think I've ever done. <laughs> I'm just sorry about that. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm just, glad to help. I just, I, I don't want you to walk away from this, like, uh, have, you know, thinking that I just totally, like, brought you down or anything, though. Like, I hope some of this stuff was actually helpful. Absolutely. Um, did you find that this was helpful at all, or did, like, do you want, like, oh, yes. this? Um, you know, I, I'm not in the office yet. I couldn't, you know, I'm... But I, you know, made I, I do understand a lot of things from the website point of view, from the SEO point of view, and the, uh, you know, from the the sales and the presentation point of view. Um, I think, yeah, you know, because I just need to go ahead and, you know, when I reach office, you know, I just need to go ahead and make sure I have everything in place. You know, I, I need to create a, a, as you say, you know, a roadmap towards handling things better and pitching better using uh, probably a layout, just that, you know, the Excel layout that you just showed me. Yeah, so I think yeah. Yeah, this this was really, really helpful, actually. Was it? Okay, um, cool. I was worried that you aren't, like, I. Yeah, sometimes absolutely. people, like, take it more as, like, a, you know, me, like, telling them, oh, look, you're not doing things right. Like, oh, no. you're See, doing, uh, you're yeah. arguably doing better than I am in terms of clients. So, I, you know, if 
If anything, <laughs> you should be the but, one giving me advice. No, to be honest, um, you know, the only reason I would say when we started with web design, um, the only reason we were able to grow and or you know get more clients in web design was because we were able to listen to our customers. Uh, friends, colleagues, employees, and everyone. So I think, uh, and following them and implementing those things and what people love. So l learning is something that you can always do from everyone. I think if you if you stop learning, that's when you stop growing, I guess. So I would say, you know, thank you so much. You taught me a lot um, in terms of, um, you know, the not only SEO, I would say, you know, to better manage the business altogether. Because that is something that was troubling me because I spent a lot of time talking to clients, I spent a lot of time uh, talking to employees, uh, talk, talk to people, you know, like, uh, you know, here and there, vendors and stuff like that. So I get really less time to go ahead and, you know, look into the, the billing structure, how to make, improve my, uh, the pitch, how to go ahead and, you know, pitch it so that, you know, I could get more revenue out of it. So that is something I've been not focusing focusing on quite lately. So this is something that really helps me out and speeds up things for me. So I would say, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really happy and thankful to you. For <laughs> <doing this laughs> cool, man. Sweet. I, yeah. Well, you know, it's hard. Like I said, it's hard for me to give advice without sounding like hypocritical, too, because, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, I got a lot of stuff to work on as well. And, you know, everybody has stuff to work on. So I'm glad I was actually able to send give you some stuff that maybe you can be able to take home and I don't know. Um, but anything, yeah, let me know how it goes, man. I'm, I'm interested just to hear in the future, like if you ever stop by another stream, just let me know. I'd be, you know, I'd love to hear yeah. how that ends up going. Absolutely. So the first thing, yeah, you know, I'm just going to, once this is a, uh, yeah, this is live. So yeah, the first thing I'm going to do is, you know, uh, share this with, with the announce team and, um, you know, let them know about the, the things we're going to do. And once everyone everyone is on on the same page as you know as I am right now, so we can go ahead and implement it and we'll make some changes to the website, create some files and add some conversion ratio and how to show it, how to present it. So because I, the, the biggest thing I could notice when you were talking about uh, conversions, uh, SEO conversions was your presentation is really awesome. I, I would. You know the the files and the coordination that you have in terms of conversion that is really something that you know i could grasp i, I could learn yeah that is that is something i would definitely work on you know really awesome i, I was an amazing experience altogether right on yeah i mean honestly like i i didn't do this stuff until like probably a year down the line of starting my agency and like i can just tell you from like the comparison like it's so much easier like you know i spend most of my time just doing lead gen and like doing what i want now and like training people on like how to like focus on the things that really matter in terms of what clients care about in terms of seo right because in web design it's more about what shows in terms of like what they can see on their website and people can always be happy about that but in seo like the core things that people really care about are you know what are you doing because they don't care about too much information. They don't want to know, like you were saying, they don't yeah. want to know everything about analytics, but they want to know enough about what you're doing to feel comfortable. But they also want to know, you know, am I getting more conversions than I was before? And is that coming from Google or is that coming from somewhere else? And if it's not coming from, from Google, why, right? Is it coming yeah. from Facebook? Because they're, cause they don't care. If you say, I want to do next month remarketing for you and I want to bring in a bunch of clients from Facebook because I know remarketing works, right? Yeah. They'll say, yeah, right. It has nothing to do with SEO. And, and so it goes away from how do I do SEO for these people forever? Right. Cause that's impossible. Yeah. You know, yeah. maybe it is if they're a national website, but then it goes more into how can I help maintain these people's presence online by building brand, by building clientele and by building value. Um, and that you can always do no matter what you can, you know, and, and, and it builds a lot more trust. You keep people in, who you know really respect you and 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 you get you know referrals for more SEO clients because of that. Um, in my opinion, it's just it's all around so much better than the layout that most people have. Which you know I'm not saying that it's wrong and that's you know you can't maintain it, but in my opinion, this scales so much better in the long run if you can just you know get that done. 
uh, that you would you're gonna you know six months from now I, I'm I'm guessing if you do set all that stuff up you know come back and tell me like dude I'm so happy I switched to that yeah absolutely you know that's I'm, I'm definitely gonna get back to you probably in a month or so um, and let you know you know how it all went and probably it's gonna be a, a, a good success story altogether so yeah uh, yeah, so, well, I'd yeah, love to hear you. about it. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much, Chase. I think you covered it all. I would say, you know, um, most of <laughs> the thing. Yeah, you know, I, I couldn't see anything that you missed. Uh, you know, it was just perfect. <laughs> so awesome. Uh, it's really awesome. Sweet man. Well, I guess I'll be seeing you in the near future, and uh, let me know how it goes. And um, as usual. Absolutely. Keep us going. S U N. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, have a lovely evening. All right, take all care right, of yourself. You Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, bye. All right, guys. So that was the end. That was the longest audit I think I've ever done for a person. It's had an hour and fifty minutes. I will be posting the replay. Let me know what you guys think, and if you'd like a free audit in the future, let me know in the comments. And until I see y'all next time, happy SEOing.